You can do better. Give him the highest praise. Say thank you. Say thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for loving kindness. Lift up your hands. Say heavily, Father. Help our Father, the Archbishop, to help us. Bless him to bless us. Pray for your Father right now. Pray for me. Pray for me that I will not come to you in the enticing words of man's wisdom, but I'll come by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, speaking the word of the Lord, not by skill, yea, but by the enabling, the, the, by the enabling of the Spirit, giving utterance by the Spirit of God, speaking as I ought to, without leaning on the arm of flesh. In the name of Jesus, put your hands together, give him praise. You can do better. Come on. Give him glory. Now, take a minute, welcome one or two people to church and be seated with a clap and a shout. Are you clapping? Are you shouting? I can't feel your clap and your shouting. Give me high energy praise. High energy clap and a shout. looking up to and I don't know what gives you strength to move on but I know that it is written lean not on your own understanding because in the times and days we live in the understanding of man is limited 
Be not wise in your own eyes. The wisdom of man is limited. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. The Bible said in Jeremiah 9, he said, let not the wise man boast of his wisdom. These are not days to boast of your wisdom. No, 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 no. Because the wisdom of man is limited. Whatever portion of wisdom you have in life is limited. Solomon's wisdom was limited. That's why he ended up with thousand women. Because he was given a portion of wisdom. He didn't have all the wisdom of God. He had a portion. And as long as we stay connected to God, we will always have wisdom to deal wisely with the affairs of life. But if we just depend on the portion of wisdom we have, we are limited. We are restricted. So he said, let not the wise man boast of glory in his wisdom. Because whatever portion of wisdom you have is limited. So let not the mighty man boast of glory of their strength or the rich man boast of their riches. They are all seeking some. On Christ the solid rock I stand on the ground is sinking sand all on the ground is sinking sand on Christ the soul is sinking sand. Trust me. The Bible said curse is every man who put his trust in the arm of flesh. The Bible said some trust in chariots and others in horses. But we shall remember the name of the Lord our God. Somebody put your hands together and say yes. The times we live in requires of you and I, demands of you and I to look up, to look unto Jesus, who is the beginning and the finisher of our faith, the author and the finisher of our faith. No man is the author. No man is the author, the beginning or the end of our faith. People might have brought you and I to the knowledge of the Son of God. No preacher, no prophet, no apostle, no pastor, no teacher, no one, no one is the author and the finisher of our faith but Jesus. He and he alone is the author and finisher of our faith. And as never before, we must look up to him. Because men will fail us. Men will disappoint us. I can fail you. I can disappoint you. But Jesus never fails. I said Jesus never fails. He can never disappoint you or he, he never misses it. He does not miss it. So let our eyes be on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. If you look at Hebrews, the 11th chapter, which you should do after lunch, go through those whole 40 verses. It will show you great men and women who walked with God and the things they went through and how they ended up well. They finished well because they did not lose faith in God. Their faith was in God no matter and irrespective what they suffered and what they went through. They never took their eyes off the master. Don't take your eyes off Jesus. Keep your eyes on him because he's the altar and the finisher of your faith. If you believe it, put your hands together and say yes. Come with me to Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Say, so great cloud of witnesses. These are people in Hebrews 11. And many that have gone ahead of you and I. And they have joined the cloud of witnesses. 
and looking down and they are cheering us and saying you can do it you cannot fail you must not fail tell somebody I will not fail tell somebody I cannot fail I've come too far I will pass the test if you believe you will pass the test put your hands together and give him praise go ahead let us lay aside every weight. Let's lay aside weights. Go ahead. And the sin which doth so easily beset and us. And the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. Running with patience. The this race. generation don't know anything about patience and endurance and shame. It's an instant generation. We want everything overnight. And everything that comes overnight does not last. Mm. The difference between the first and the last Adam is this. The first Adam was made overnight. The last Adam went through process. Learned obedience through the many things he suffered. The difference between the first king of Israel, Saul, and the second king of Israel, David, was this. The first king of Israel was made overnight. He was trending. He became big through social media. He was everywhere. Everybody was hailing him. Everybody wanted him. David went through 17 years of process. Three levels of anointing. First, anointing and acceptance before his brethren. Second, anointing before Judah. Third, anointing before Israel. 17 years of going through process. And when you are going through process, you always be tempted to take a shortcut because you see when God makes promise to you he will try you through the promise and through the process you go the Bible said when God made promise to Joseph the word of the Lord tried Joseph until the word came to pass so the delays of God most time is to see whether you will trust God or you will take a shortcut God promised Abraham a son it took 25 years during the 25 years, the wife showed him a shortcut, and he took the shortcut, which has created a conflict of destiny up to today by that shortcut. Sometimes when you are waiting for the manifestation of what God has promised, there will be the tendency to take a shortcut. The enemy will always present to you a way out, which is a temptation during the time of waiting and going through process to develop the capacity and the character necessary for longevity after the promise has come to pass. And that time is when your faith is being tested. That's why you must get my book, Don't Fight the Process. And the other one, the, something about the valley. There's a, there's a title for that one. Beyond the valley. Anytime you find yourself in the valley, the next thing after the valley is going up to the mountain. You can never climb a mountain without a valley. And whenever we are in the valley, remember that the next thing after the valley is climbing up. You are going up. You might be down today, but you are getting up. You can't go up to the mountain without the valley. So whenever you find yourself in the valley, don't be depressed. Because the next thing after the valley is climbing to the top. You will mount up with wings as an eagle. Your strength shall be renewed. You will sell. You will, you will excel. You will not be done forever. You will rise up to the top of the mountain. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Beyond the valley. The test of faith, the test of character, and the test of obedience. Those three things is in the book of Beyond the Valley. And don't fight the process. Life is about process. Gold is not gold until it's tested by fire. Today's generation wants everything instant. It doesn't work like that. God doesn't work that way. He will put you through the test. Like the three Hebrew young men, they said the other day, our God is able to deliver and he will. But even if he chooses not to deliver, we will still not compromise what we know about God. I was telling a preacher the other day, I said, there are certain things God has made available to deliver and to help us. 
the word of God, fasting and prayer, the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus. I said, if these things can help you, then forget it. Don't try anything outside of these things. But whatever it is, waiting and going through the process, fasting and praying, trusting in his name, in the blood of Jesus, in the workings of the Holy Spirit, the name of Jesus, the word of God, is a matter of time, and you will have the upper hand. Make no mistake, whatever you are dealing with will end in a testimony. Come on, somebody. If you believe it, put your hands together and say, make no mistake, make no mistake. Oh, my enemy, this too will end in a testimony. If you believe it, put your hands together and give him praise. They meant it for evil, but it will end in a testimony. Say yes. Go ahead. And let us run with patience the race that is set before let us. Let us run with patience. To me, I think that we run with speed. But the Bible says with patience. Patience. Everybody needs speed and acceleration when we are running. But the Bible says, this race set before us is a race you run with patience and not with speed. So let those who are in haste to overtake, to go ahead, to become the latest and the biggest and to train and to be the one that everybody is talking about and praising, let them go ahead. I'm not in haste. I'm not in haste. I am coming. I'm coming. Not in haste. For those that wait on the Lord, those that wait on the Lord, shall renew their strength. My strength is being renewed daily. They will mount up with wings as eagle. I am renewing my strength. I will mount up with wings as eager. They will run. They will run. They will run and not be weary. Yea, they will walk and not faint. I will not be weary as I run. I will not faint as I walk. Because I am mounting up with wings as an eagle. I am coming. I am coming. So go ahead. Go ahead. It is okay. Trend. Be the latest. Be the biggest. Be the one that everybody is praising and talking about. It doesn't matter. It's just a matter of time. Come on, tell somebody it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. If you believe it's a matter of time, put your hands together and say it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Go ahead. Be the latest and the biggest. It doesn't matter. It's just a matter of time. I'm running in my own lane. I'm coming in patience. Long suffering. Go ahead. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our Looking faith. Looking unto Jesus, not unto gifts, not unto anointings, not unto anyone, not unto any teacher, not unto apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, or pastors. Not unto any, but unto Jesus and he alone. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author, the beginner and the finisher of our faith. My faith is in him. Yes, sir. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Not anyone. He and he alone. He and he alone. See, I hear you. I hear you, sir. Hallelujah. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross? Who because of the joy set before him endured? Today's generation knows nothing about endurance. We want everything immediately. We can't endure. We don't know how to go through challenges, difficulties. We lack understanding that even the master we look up to have to endure. At the time of his life, he endured. Go ahead despising the shame. He despised shame. The word shame means humiliation. The Bible said before honor is humility. Before honor is shame. Before honor is humiliation. Look at Joseph. The amount of shame he had to go through. Being misrepresented. Stigmatized. Scandalized. 
and evidence that is not true was presented against him. No lawyer would take his case. No lawyer would touch him. Nobody to defend him. No amount of expl explanation explaining himself could exonerate him. He was implicated, guilty by charge. No way out. There come a time and a day, ladies and gentlemen, in all of our life, that explanation, defending yourself, cannot help you. But you come to a place when you have to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of it, and trust him against all odds and against all contradictions. You must learn to trust him. And that was where Joseph was. He was a stranger, an immigrant, in a foreign land. No brother, no father, no sibling, nobody to help him, nobody to pity him. And he realized that all I have is God and him alone. Psalm 3 verse 3. He said, oh Lord, many are they that say there is no hope for me. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lift up of my head. You come to a place where nothing works for you. No explanation but silence. Silence. Holding your peace and saying, Lee in him, Lee in him, safe and secure for our love. Yeah, Lee in him, Lee Sometimes you get to a point where you can't pray with your understanding. You can't pray with your understanding. Your father's dialect, mother's dialect, English doesn't work. Because you don't even know where to begin from and where to end. That's what the Bible says. We know not how to pray as we ought to. But the Spirit himself helps our infirmity. What, what does infirmity mean? Inability to give expression as you ought to. Inability. Limitation. You are limited to what you can pray about. So they get to attack. Modaya kusanda kasind one satala hasind. Elindu kasile mosifa akantu wundu kalinda. Hey, lumanda kasiman wahasintu kulunda kasada halis. Why? Because I don't know what to say. I have no explanation. I can't explain it. I can't. I have to pray in the Holy Ghost. I have to pray in other tongues because I don't know where to begin from and I don't know where to end. When you have done all that is required of you, when you have done the best of your ability and known that you have done everything required and yet you are seeing situations really staring at you, whether it is family or marriage or children or loved one, and you look at it and you say, God, I can't make sense out of that this. It doesn't add up. It's like when Jesus was on the cross. Matthew 27. And the enemy said, you, Jesus, you say you are the son of God? You heal others, heal yourself. Physician, heal yourself. If you are the son of God, come down the cross and save yourself. How do you explain that? He said nothing. Because there come a time in all of us in the life of all of us, where no amount of what you say and explanation can exonerate you. It's like a woman pregnant. For the nine months you are carrying that child, it doesn't matter what happens. You have to wait till the ninth month. You can't force to get that baby out. You need to wait for the nine months because if that baby comes six, seven months, fifth, ten months, because you're going through pain, discomfort is immature. Amateur. And sometimes the enemy wants our exposure to come before time. I don't want any amateur exposure. I don't want to be known before time. 
Job 14, 14. He said, for all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. I want to wait till the appointed time. Ah, mosadu kisadaha. Ilai tutun kawan sitahan lefandu kumsu wahalan ilayan tukuhundu sada. The other day, David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, when I'm heavy hearted, when I'm broken hearted, he said from the ends of the earth, I will cry out, lead me to the rock higher than I. There come a time when all of us must learn how to cry out. Crying out is very important. And we do it every now and then. If you don't know how to cry out, you will always be walking with a broken heart. But I have learned. When man can do nothing for me, somebody asked me some time ago, he said, Archbishop, you, you are always hearing people's burdens and problems and helping others. And he said, you, who do you offload your burdens? Who helps you? And I looked at her and I said, Madam, me, only God can help me. I said, I cry out to God because the things I deal with, you can't help me. If I try to explain, it doesn't make sense. Physician, heal yourself. If you be the son of God, come down from the cross. You save others. You fix others. Fix yourself. How do you fix yourself when you fix others and you are confronted with situations that you lack the ability to fix yourself? You got to trust the master. You got to trust the master because if you try anything outside of that, you miss it. You complicate the issues. You got to let him know, my eyes are on you, Lord. And you know, Job said the other day, he said, though he slays me, yet I will serve him. It doesn't matter what I go through, what I deal with. I have no choice but to serve you. There's no other alternative. There's no other way. You are the truth, the life, and the way. Jesus, you are the only way, the truth and the life. I don't know of any other way. I don't have any alternative. If I know of any other alternative, I would have taken it. Listen, where I've come from, there's no help there. There's nothing for me where I've come from. I know where I came from. The bridge is burnt. I can't go back. I've come too far to look back. I paid too much of a price to turn back. I can't turn back. There is nothing for me where I've come from. You know the reason why some of you can't trust God? You are very arrogant and proud. There is something for you where you come from. For me, there's nothing there. Where I've come from, there's nothing. There's nothing there. So I have no other alternative but to trust God and to believe him anyway. Are you hearing me, somebody? Put your hands together and give him praise. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. There's no other way. I don't have any other alternative. There's no middle ground. You trust him or you don't trust him. Tell somebody, it is what it is. You trust him or you don't trust him. There is no middle ground. No middle ground. I have no choice but to trust him. Go ahead. Despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yes, sir. He had to deny himself of all reputation. You see, if you want to walk with God, eh, you must come to a place where you trust God with your reputation. Where you trust God to protect your reputation. Jesus, the one we look up to, was of no reputation. If you, are, if you are too much into your reputation and what people think of you, you won't make it. Jesus had to despise humiliation, shame, embarrassment, stigma, misrepresentation. Yeah. Scandals. 
He couldn't explain himself. Joseph could not explain himself. Came to a place. There come a time in all of our lives when you have no choice but to look up. Joseph was misrepresented. And Potiphar's wife was holding the evidence. He, wore, he ran with his underwear. And his dress was in the hands of Potiphar's wife, the accuser. Tell somebody, next time when you are running, take the evidence with you. <laughs> you didn't say what I said. Say it. With, tell the person, I'm telling you, I'm prophesying to you. Next time when you are running, take the evidence with you. Yeah. Because here was Joseph wearing his underwear alone. Nothing else. He was naked. And the wife of Potiphar said, he came to rape me. This is the proof. Ask him, where is his garment? Why is he naked? Why is he in his underwear? No lawyer will touch the case. Nobody will touch it. An immigrant in a foreign land dealing with a five-star army general, wife. No lawyer will touch the case in Egypt. What do you do? It doesn't matter what you say. Nobody will hear you. You have no defense. Sometimes it's not about defending yourself. It's not about explaining yourself because you can explain and still lose. But you must come to a place where sometimes it looks like you've lost and you are losing, but you can lose and still win when God is on your side. And you can win and still lose when God is against you. Modaya kasawan, ketunda kasalahat, defend the wounds, ahan kulandi wahasalan, imandu ku wahadalahasat. Thou alone, thou alone knowest the way that I go, and when you have tried me, I will come forth as gold. And when men are cast down, I will say there is a lifting up, because my trust is in thee, O Lord. Put your hands together and give him praise. Hey! Somebody say, hey, 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 hey! Come with me. Let me, let me show you a messianic prophecy. A messianic prophecy. Something that was prophesied many years, thousands of years before it happened about the Lord Jesus. Messianic. Psalm 22 was a messianic prophecy. When David saw Jesus on the cross, 2,000 years before it happened, and David wrote in Psalm 22, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? That was Jesus speaking 2,000 years before it came to pass. That is what we call messianic prophecy. Look at Psalm 69, reading from verse 19 to 21. Thou hast known my reproach. He said, you have known my reproach. Joseph was facing a reproach. When the Lord made promise to Joseph, the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord tried him. He was tried, tested. And God said, Joseph, let me see if you will still stand for me in the face of reproach and disgrace and misrepresentation. Stigma. Stigma. And scandal. In the very land that I have planned to make you a prime minister. I will set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I plan to make you a prime minister. The number two in all this, in this land, in this same nation. But before then, you have to face humiliation. Before then, let me see how you deal with shame, reproach, embarrassment. For before honor is humility. Before honor is shame. Before honor is humiliation. Look at people in the Bible, including Jesus. Before he was honored, he went through shame. He dealt with some embarrassment. What makes you think that even the one we look up to went through shame and embarrassment and you and I don't have to? Every now and then, we go through things. We face situations that looks like what's going on. We can't explain ourselves. Sometimes people can say, Papa, what's going on? 
And I said, nothing is going on. Why are you asking me? I have nothing to say. I can't explain it. It is what it is. Tell somebody, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, stop asking me for explanation. Someone say, I'm sending you a video. Don't send me anything. I don't want to watch and I don't want to hear. I'm already down. I'm already in pain. Don't complicate my pain. Don't complicate my broken heart. Don't. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. But make no mistake. At the end of the day, I will emerge victorious. Make no mistake. This too will end in a testimony. It's just a matter of time. Somebody says it's a matter of time. Yeah. It's just between now and there, that middle, that space is painful and difficult. But I'll pull through. I'll pull through. I will go through. I will survive. I am a survivor. I'm a survivor and not a casualty. I am a victor and not a victim. Say, I am a victor and not a victim. I am a survivor and not a casualty. I will emerge victorious. It's just a matter of time. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together. Give him praise. Go ahead. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame uh -huh. and my dishonor. My dishonor. Sometimes you are dishonored among your own kinsmen. Dishonored. Disregarded. Disrespected. Despised. Looked down upon only because of something you are dealing with that people can't make sense of. If thou be the son of God, come down from the cross. Save thyself. Physician, heal thyself. But Jesus said nothing. There come a time when you have nothing to say. But keep quiet. If thou be the son of God, come down from the cross. Prove it. If thou be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If thou be the son of God, prove it, cast thyself down, for he has given his angels charge over thee. Jesus said, no, you are quoting out of context. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, as you tempted him in Massa. He said, okay, Jesus, I'm taking you. I'm showing you all the glories of this world. Let's see how you handle that. Jesus said, why are you wasting your time? It's not going to work. The purpose of my coming is to taste death so they don't have to die prematurely. It's to share my blood for their salvation that is greater than having money and kingdoms and riches and glory. Salvation is bigger than anything, higher than anything, better than money and riches. You can have all those things, but if you lose your soul, what is the benefit? Jesus said, my blood must be shared. That is why I'm here. Amen. Madu, Madakasa, go ahead. My adversaries are all before thee. He said, my adversaries, my accusers, they are all before. They are all before thee, Lord. You see them. I'm being accused, being misrepresented. They say all kinds of things because they don't understand. They don't appreciate why I must go on the cross. Why I must go through shame and embarrassment and scandals and misery. They, they don't get it. But it's a process. It's part of the calling. It's part of the work and the process. And you know, Paul said the other day, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Then Paul said, don't be ashamed of me, the servant of the Lord, because of my chains. chains. Because of my chains. Because of my shortcoming, because of my, don't be ashamed of me. It's a matter of time. All of this passes away. Go ahead. Reproach has broken my heart. He said reproach has broken my heart. Sometime your heart will be broken. Because you look at things. You say, what's going on? How do I explain this? How do I make sense of it? You can't make sense of everything. If we can make sense of everything, then we don't need him. And I have come to a point where I realize that it's not everything I can make sense of. And the more I serve him, 
The more dependent I become on him, yes, sir. the more humble I become as the years go by because I realize that after all these years, I still don't understand all of his ways. I still can't make sense of everything. And I realize that the higher I climb, the more reliant and dependent and humble I must become to better appreciate and understand him. Because he owes me no explanation. Odu Kasawaha. The Katum Kalindi Siwan Dei Fukum Wusin Kilayadu Wan Kayam Satalama Hadum Ke Dukum Suwanda Kasa. Yes, indeed, you owe me no explanation. For I have humbled myself as a child. For I understand that there are things that are so bigger and higher than I that I can make no sense of. So I've learned. To humble myself. Go ahead. And I am full of heaviness. I'm full of what? Heaviness. heaviness. The Bible in Isaiah 53, he said, a man of sorrows, Jesus, acquainted with grief, for we esteem him not. And it pleased God to bruise him. Yeah. We esteem him not. Rejected. Acquainted with grief. He's talking about heaviness. Every now and then, you feel this weight on your shoulders. Heaviness. Go ahead. He's despised and rejected. He was just, no, no, no. Uh -huh. let's come back. Go ahead. He said, and I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. No, 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 no. Go back to 53. Isaiah 53. Uh -huh. He said, we hid as it were our faces from him. We he was hid our faces. There's a time where even friends and loved ones won't return your call. They are so ashamed and embarrassed of you. They act like they are there. I remember some time ago I was dealing with some situation and I called <coughs> somebody. And uh, the, the daughter came on the phone and he said, my daddy said I, I should tell you he's not in. And I said, okay, tell him I called. <laughs> my daddy said I should tell you he's not in. Because I was going through a situation that he had concluded that I was finished. I'll never rise again. Hey, who is he that saith a thing and it cometh to pass when the Lord God commanded it not? Make no mistake. The prophet said, when I fall, I will rise again. Tell somebody I will rise again. It's just a matter of time. I will rise again. And he said, when I dwell in darkness, the Lord is a light unto me. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. It is not yet over. Oh, Yasalus, Wakadund, Devilund, Wikahandu Salam, Wahandiala Tanda Kasum, Mifondu Sum, Kulandu Kahandisa, Ayanda Kawahasin, Hey. Likitu Kulu Kasindi Manda Wahasada, Ah, Dusia. Katus, Modis, Kadas, Lewas, Lubasis. It's just a matter of time. Make no mistake. This is not the end. This is not the end. It's not yet over. It's just a matter of time. I'm just beginning. I'm just beginning. It's just a matter of time. Put your hands together. Give him praise, somebody. Go ahead, Isaiah 53. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Despised. This is the master. Jesus, looking unto Jesus. Jesus was despised and he wasn't esteemed. Those of you who always want to be in the good books of people, you've been fooled, you've been deceived. The master was despised. We esteem him not. There come a time when you'll be ignored. And I've been in situations in my life when I've been ignored. Yes, sir. And other people that I lay hands on, prayed for, were esteemed highly above me. And I said nothing and I kept quiet. And I said, Lord, thou knowest all things. And this also, I will not be arrogant, neither will I plead my cause on this matter. 
for thou knowest all things. I said nothing. And I held my peace. And as time went on, the tables turned. It turned in my favor. Go ahead. Back to our, yeah, go back to our scripture. It's an, and I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. I looked. Joseph, who could take pity? Who could side with Joseph? There come a time when nobody can side with you. When even your husband, your wife, can't understand what you are dealing with. When your loved ones, your friends, siblings, and loved ones can't make sense of what you are going through. And sometimes they will put you down. They will tell you things that hurt. But in the midst of it all, with the misrepresentation, you have to trust him. You must trust him. You must say, Lord, I have no defense of my own, no explanation. I trust you. My eyes are on you, Lord. My eyes are on you. And I know that at the appointed time, I will emerge victorious. I will emerge with the upper hand. I know at the appointed time, thou shalt avenge me. But till then, grant me the grace that I may endure, despise the shame, and go through whatever I have to go through until the appointed time. It's a process. It's a test of our obedience, our faith. Whether you will trust the Lord in the mix of it all or you take a shortcut. Whether you will defend yourself and explain yourself to look good and to feel good. Hear me. Life is not about feeling good and looking good. It's about being vindicated. Masala sata. Makasanta wasa. Safand luwand kis to mundu vanda kalum. Ei kitu kusala. Asata katu wadasa. Liki tu kubalasa. Ilemo lu wahada. Alanda kawan sataladika. Imundu ka amaya ikoso mesa usu leka amba. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. He said, I looked around for people who can understand my pain. To say something, to give me comfort. To encourage me, but I found none. They were light. None was at a level that can appreciate what I was going through. They didn't get it. They were criticizing me. They were saying something is wrong with me. Like Job, when he was going through his problem, his friends said to him, Job, you, you sin, you've missed it. Confess, tell us what happened. What did you do wrong? Job, tell us. And Job have no explanation to give because he himself didn't know what was going on. God has set him up to test him, to see, and to prove to Satan that it doesn't matter what happened to Job. He will stand for God. And he himself didn't know what was going on. And his friends said, Job, 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 listen, we've been around for a long time. We've known you. What is it that you are not telling us? Confide in us. Tell us. And I could hear Job saying, listen, me, myself, I don't understand what's going on. I can't explain myself. I have nothing to say. There come a time when it doesn't matter how much you explain, it will make sense. And you know something I've learned? I've stopped wasting my time to explain myself to people who can't help themselves, much more help me. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Right. They gave me also gall or poison. Poison for my meat. For meat. And in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. That was Jesus. Messianic prophecy. He said, I test. I test. Water. Water. And for water, they gave him vinegar. On the cross. Say, so you don't deserve water, you Jesus. You heal others. Heal yourself. Son of God. Calm down. Save yourself. Prove to us. That you are the son of God. Hear me. There come a time when you can't prove anything. I'm telling you. There come a time. I have learned this over the years. There come a time when I can't prove anything to anybody. Not to my wife. 
not to my children, not to my loved ones, not to anybody. I can't prove anything because me, myself, I can't make sense of what I'm dealing with. I have nothing to prove. Lean in. Lean in. in. Safe and secure from all Allah. Yeah. Lean in. Kayasa Latsa Watasanda. Christianity is. You come to a place where what he did, shedding of his blood, giving of his life for you and I, settles all contradictions and controversies. You come to a place where you say, you know something? I don't need any argument. You can argue all day long. I have nothing to argue for. It is enough that Jesus died and shed his blood for me. That alone is enough. It's enough. If it's for nothing else, the fact that he shed his blood and died in my place, it is enough. Tell somebody it is enough. Let's finish. 21. It's done. It's done. They gave him poison for yeah. his meat. Okay, would... let's look at Hebrews 5, 7. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared, though he were a son, yet lend he obedience by the things which he suffered and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. This, this is Jesus we are talking about. The one you and I must look up to. The author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible says, who in the days of his flesh, that's why I've declared that once a week, every member of the church must fast and join the Wednesday service. And every volunteer worker must fast on Friday and meet for prayer. It's very important. You can't be a child of God and eat seven days a week. And don't tell me that, Papa, me, I don't have the gift of fasting. I don't have the gift of prayer. Nobody has the gift of fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer is a spiritual discipline. An exercise we must all embark on. If you can't come to command your week on Monday morning, at least Saturday morning glory, seven to nine, you must come. 
You must join. You shouldn't be independent of the gathering of the brethren. You shouldn't get to a place where you can't join anything. You are not part of anything. You are just to yourself. It is a problem. The sin of man is independence from God. Selfishness. Isolating from the brethren and others, thinking that you are sufficient. Our sufficiency is of one another. No one is sufficient on his own. God made it that way, that no one would take the preeminence but him. You need others. You need somebody. You may not realize it today, but there will come a time when the dust settles, when the curtains are brought down, when water finds its level, you realize on that day that you need somebody. Don't be too anointed. Here was Jesus. In the days of his flesh, he prayed and he cried out. And you know what he was praying against? He was praying against premature death. He was praying to block, prohibit and intercept every move of the enemy to use any situation to take him out before he got to the cross. I declare that we will not die prematurely. That we will end up well in life. We will have the expected end that nothing will take us out before time. We prohibit any move and attempt of the enemy within and without to interfere with our mission and God's agenda for our lives. Say yes. yes. Ah. sawan kosundu kalis. Selimi kitum. Lift up your hand. Talk to God. Mekusada. Salanda kasuda asi atalan kafa duwansit duluku wa adinsa mansi tu kudiki la kasi gada ah ge duwa kasum kide kitunda kalami tu sut ah etu kabiasa let their expectations and ill will be disappointed. Let their projections and their calculations and their forecasts and predictions be disappointed in the name of Jesus. Makun Makasia. Come with me to Matthew chapter 14, verse 28 to 32. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Hear me. It's very dangerous in the times we live in eh, to trust in your gift and your anointing. Apart from Jesus, Peter was the only one since creation that walked upon the sea. And when you are gifted and very anointed, you have to be very careful. Because you can come to a place where you don't need God to perform like Solomon. He had a portion of the wisdom of God and taught he had everything. It was just a portion to govern. Wisdom to deal with other matters. He had to stay connected to God. Like Samson, for 20 years of his rule, he prayed only two times. He didn't need God. Because he had what it takes to fix the problem. He was a fixer. The systems were working. The gifts were working. The anointing was working. Money was flowing. Buku. So, seeking God. Fasting, praying, mean, it didn't mean anything to him. Yeah. But well, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how gifted we become or we are. And how anointed we become or we are. We always need him. You always need him. And Peter was soaring. Doing so well that he was literally walking on the sea without Jesus. The dude was no joke. He was walking on the sea. And for a second, he forgot himself. And he started going down. Then the Bible said, he cried out and said, Master. He recognized that he had a master. I know you are anointed, 
but you have a master. I know you are gifted, but you have a master. I know you are operating in the supernatural, but you have a master. Never forget that you have a master. All of us, we have a master. Say master. Say master. Somebody straight say master. Help. You can be so gifted, so anointed, that you forget that you have a master. Peter lost sight. He lost sight of the fact that though he was walking on the sea, it was the enabling of the master. He cried out. And the master said, okay, I got you now. Now that you realize that you are gifted, you are walking on the sea, but you still need your master. The Bible says, and immediately, somebody used the word, say immediately, immediately. Immediately. He stretched out his hand. He caught him and said, okay, I got you. Somebody said, the master got you. The master got you. He got you. He got you. He got you. He said, you can be so gifted, so anointed that you forget yourself. And you forget yourself that you have a master. And the gift, eh? the gift is very dangerous. So you can be so good at what you do by the gift, by the anointing, that you can function Without the master. I was talking to a bishop, son of mine, the other day when I was in London. I called him at five in the morning and he was asleep. And he was preparing to go preach that morning. And I said, you are going to preach at eight o'clock. And he's five and you are sleeping. When are you going to get up and pray? When are you going to go before the Lord for the presence? So you get up in the morning by six. You shower. You have breakfast. And you go and stand before the people and say, open your Bible. Open your Bible to what? I said, you are a lecturer. You have nothing to offer them. You don't have the breath of God. You don't have, you don't have the presence. It's all letter, letter. That's why your church is dry like that. Five o'clock, you are asleep. You are going to preach at eight o'clock. And you are not talking to the master. And you go and stand there and talk to the people. Dry bones. I didn't ask you to clap. <laughs> you can be so gifted and so anointed and so good with gift, anointing, and systems when you don't need God. Yes, you don't. You don't need him. And that is where we run into all kinds of problems. Because even when you are connected, you still go through a test. He will still test you. Much more going through a test without him.
Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. I don't know which rock you are standing on. But I'm standing on Christ the solid rock. Second Corinthians chapter 4. We are troubled on every side, troubled yet not distressed. On every side. Yet not distressed. He said we are troubled every now and then. On every side, you turn to the right, turn to the left, trouble on every side. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Perplexity, perplexity, discomfort. Persecute, persecuted, but not forsaken. We are persecuted, rejected, misrepresented, but they still need us, but they still talk ill of us. We are cast down but not destroyed. We are cast down every now and then. We are not destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> Hebrews 7, 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them that to the uttermost that come to God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Tell somebody, thank God Jesus is praying for me. Thank God. Thank God he's praying for us. Yes, sir. Thank God for Jesus' prayers. His prayers will see us through. We will forge for it. We will go forward. We will cross every valley and climb every mountain. We will cross every river and climb every hill. Hey, because Jesus is praying for me. Psalm 50. Isaiah 50 verse 7. I want to stop here. I think I'm done for today. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. I will not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint. I set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall not be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. Tell two people, stand on feet, tell two people, I will not be ashamed. I will not, I will be, not ashamed. be ashamed. It's just a matter of time. I will not be ashamed. I yes, I will not be ashamed. Bishop Nyago, I will not be ashamed. Yes, Bishop James, I will not be ashamed. Bishop Obodai, I will not be ashamed. Efo, David, I will not be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. It may look like I am ashamed, but I will not be ashamed. It's a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Make no mistake. I will emerge victorious with the upper hand. It doesn't matter how it looks like. I will not be ashamed. It's just a matter of time. Lift up your hands, everybody. Talk to God. Talk to God in your own language. In your own language, talk to Him. Yes, Lord. Master. Master. You are the Master. You are my Master. You are my Lord. In the name of the Lord, I stand. It's in your name that we stand. It is in your name that we go forward. It is in your name that we do exploit. For if it hasn't been for the Lord that was on our side, oh, then say unto Israel what Israel would have done. If it hasn't been for you, Lord, that was on our side, talk to him, pour out. If you don't know what to say, pray in the Spirit, speak in tongues. Yeah, that, there come a time when you just have to pray in the Spirit. Because everything you say don't make sense. Talk to him. From your heart. He understands where you are. People may misunderstand, misrepresent you, but he does. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If it hasn't been for the Lord that was on our side, then now let Israel say, let Israel say. But for the Lord that was on our side, talk to him. Bow your hands. I will worship.
worshiping. Lift you high above the earth and the heaven. Lift up your hands, sing it to him now. I will worship him. Lift you higher. Lift you higher above the earth and the heaven. You are If you are here this morning and you say, Preacher, I'm not sure my name is written in the book of life. I don't have the assurance of salvation. I, I'm not sure where I stand or belong when it comes to eternity with Jesus. Please, please pray for me. I'm delighted, humble, to stand with you in prayer. If you are not sure your name is written in the book of life, just lift up your right hand. Wherever you are, let me pray for you right now. Hear me, today is your choice, but tomorrow it will not be your choice. For there come a time when it's too late to repent. Esau repented, but it was too late. There will come a time when dust settles, when water finds level. When the curtains are brought down, that you realize that you need him. It might be too late. Today, you have a chance. If you say, I want my name written in the book of life. I want that assurance of salvation. Please lift up your right hand. And if your hand is lifted up, please come to me at the front here. Come and meet me at the altar. Let us pray. Please come. Come. I need you, Lord. I need you. I humble myself. Lord, I need you. Come. Don't be too sure of yourself. And if you are here, you say, I used to be born again. I backslided. I used to pray. I used to fast. I used to read my Bible. I was in church. I don't know what has happened to me. I've fallen away. I want to come back. Will you please come? Join us now. I want to be back in church. I want to be back in the Word, in prayer. I want to get back to God and the things of God. Please come. Please come. Anybody, I want to come back. Please come. Please come. Girl, oh, surrender. Please surrender. Come now. If you have to come, come now. If you must come, come. Please come. If you are here and you say, 
I'm shopping, trying to find a church. This is not my church. I don't belong anywhere. I want to settle. And you feel like today, you must make a commitment to settle. Will you join us? Please come. I want to make this place my church, my spiritual family. Come. Come. Please come. Please come. I want to settle. I'm tired of being alone. I don't want to be a soldier that goes to war on my own. I want to belong to a regiment. I want this house to be my spiritual family. Come. And if today is your first time for coming to this church, today is your first time visiting this church, please join us. We want to pray for you. Today is your first time. Come. Today is your first time. Join us. Taludakas. Today is your first time. Please come. Makale Kasa. Makale Kasa. Salanda. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Don't lose the oil. Don't lose the oil. Keep praying. Today is my first time here. I'm a first timer. Join us. Come. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. We are here for you. We want to help you. Come. Please come. Please join us. Today is my first time. Come, join us. We want to get to know you. We want to love on you. Please come. Come. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Everybody lift up your hands. Everybody lift up. Say, Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that in sin did my mother conceive me and that I need a savior. Thank you, Jesus, for being the savior of mankind. Today, I acknowledge you as Lord and savior of my life. Write my name, Lord, in the book of life. Cleanse me with your blood. Seal me with the Holy Spirit. Empower me against the day of my salvation. Help me to discover my reason for being why I was born, why I came into the world for such a time like this. Help me not to take for granted the reason for my being. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving me the opportunity to be born to come into the world for such a time like this to fulfill your purpose, your agenda, not mine, but yours. Help me not to seek to fulfill my own plans, but your purpose, your purpose. Thank you. Amen. Uh, there's a gentleman in the white standing behind. If you turn around, turn around, please. There's a gentleman in the white. Please turn around. Follow him. He has some gifts for you from me. And you'll come back and join us. Put your hands together for them as they go. Are you clapping? I will not keep silence. I will not be silenced. I will not be silent. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Talk to him. I will not be silent. I am breathing.
the blood of my salvation that I will not be disappointed I will not be a scapegoat I will not be wasted say at the time of my elevation in the prime of my life at the Kairos moment of my life I will not be sabotaged I will not be disadvantaged I will not be ashamed put your hands together and declare it disadvantage in the prime of our life in the name of Jesus now give me Acts chapter 4 verse 29 Acts 4 29 lift up your right hand say any thought any projection any impression anything that threatens my life my future this house my nation say in the name of Jesus let the threatenings of the enemy and of men and let their predictions, projections, and intimidation be intercepted over 10, over 10, over 10. Put your hands together. Intercept over 10 threatenings, intimidation of men, projections, predictions, impressions, calculations, programmings, of men, women, by air, by land, by water, intercept, intercept, over ten, over ten, over ten, over ten, by the blood of the covenant in the name of Jesus. Now, now, give me Exodus 11, 6 and 7. Exodus 11, 6 and 7. And I look as in, and I will please. Ah, Kidalu Kasalaha Satalinsa. Wasi Wasi Wasalas. 
There will be loud wailing throughout Egypt. Uh -huh. Worse than there has ever been or ever will be Yay. again. But among the Israelites, not a dog will bark at any man or Say, animal. Not a dog will bark between, within our walls. Not a dog. Not a dog will bark within our walls or this house. In 2024, not a dog will bark. Not the tongue of a dog or a beast or a human being will move. Then what? you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. We want to make a prophetic declaration today. Lord, make a distinction between me and others. Let there be a distinction between this house and other houses. Let there be a distinction between my house and that of my neighbors. Open your mouth. Make that declaration. Distinction between us and others. Make that prophecy. Make that declaration that the Lord will make a distinction between our seed and that of others. Between this house and others. Pray that prayer. A distinction. A distinction. Professor, open your mouth. Say something. Say something. Lord, make a distinction between this house and others. Between others and this house. Make a distinction between us and our neighbors and those who serve you not. Make a distinction between us and those who put their trust in men and in systems and in themselves. Make a distinction between us and those who serve you not. Yea, make a distinction. Let this year be our year of distinction from others. A year of distinction from others. Who serve you not? Who put their trust in chariots and in horses? Hear me. Before we take our tithes, I want you to make a declaration. Prayer that this year, 2024, the Lord will make a distinction between us eh, and those who put their trust in chariots and in horses. And those who put their trust in the arm of flesh. Let the Lord make a distinction between us. And lift up your hands, put your hands together, make that declaration. Make a distinction between us and others. A distinction between this house and those who put their trust in sisters, in the arm of flesh, in chariots, in horses, in men. Hey, God of heaven, Make a distinction between us and those who serve you not. A distinction between our children and that of others who fear not the Lord our God, who serve you not. Make a distinction, Lord. Open your mouth, put your hands together, make that declaration. Make a distinction. Let it be our year of distinction from others. Amen. 